Good afternoon, and uh, thank you all for joining. My name is uh, Jacob Daniels. I'm a senior portfolio manager here at Rayburn Whiskey. And uh, for those of you uh, that don't know us, I'd firstly like to briefly introduce our company to you. Um, Rayburn Whiskey has been around since 2016. We are um, the proud um, launchers or founders of the first ever whiskey index, the BC20 index. And um, we are also, spare me a second, the founders of the world's first. Spare me a second and I shall share my screen with you. Okay, so we were founded in 2016. We currently have offices in Scotland, Spain, and Singapore. And we're the founders of the world's first whiskey cask index, the BC20. We uh, are private bonded warehouses in Speyside and currently over 21 million pounds in assets under management. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about an aspect of whiskey investing that investors new to the market quite often inquire about, and that is uh, what type of cask should I be investing in? Hopefully I can help you uh, navigate your way through the various options there. As you can see from um, the graph here, a cask of whiskey will appreciate at different rates relative to the phase of its maturation. And investors can take advantage of these different phases to achieve their investment objectives. You can see here around the 15 year point, the curve in the appreciation steepens. And this is, uh, this is simply a reflection of the fact that most whiskey is bottled around this point. And beyond 15 years old, the whiskey becomes increasingly rare, resulting in a significant increase in value as the whiskey ages and becomes increasingly scarcer. And what it also demonstrates here is a consistent steady growth as the whiskey matures and increases in value. As a whiskey investor, you're essentially buying and holding that cash for a period of appreciation driven by its maturation and the change to your asset this brings and selling back into the market at a different product that has increased in value. Break up the uh, maturation cycle of uh, a cask into five distinct phases. You have there, you can see you have the new makes, emerging, intermediate, premium, and blue chip casks. So if we look at new fill casks or new make casks, these are casks that are fresh off the stills. These casks are yet to earn the title of whiskey. They obviously need to spend three years in, uh, in a oak cask before it's officially called whiskey. And typically an investor can expect to come into the market for around £3,000 for a cask of this nature. Then we have the emerging casks. These, uh, the spirits now passed through its important three-year milestone is officially whiskey. And uh, emerging casks are between three and 10 years old and are now approaching their next important milestone of 10 years old. And typically an investor can expect to come into the market at between three and £10,000 for this type of cask. You then have intermediate casks, having now passed that all important 10 year milestone. The whiskey is now entering a phase of increased appreciation as it approaches 16 years and beyond. And investors can typically expect to come into the market at between 10 and £20,000 for a cask of this type. Um, I tend to call this the sort of sweet spot as uh, investing at this point gives you the chance to take advantage of the period of significant appreciation without paying the premium associated with all the casks. And then you have premium casks. These casks, all than 20 years, present investors with the opportunity to own a valuable asset that is considered to be rare and highly sought after. And investors coming into the market at this stage can take a shorter view on the investment and enjoy significant capital returns when putting the cash back into the market. And typically an investor would be coming into the market at around 
£20,000 plus. Then you have the blue chip cast. These are the sort of aristocracy of the whiskey world, extremely rare and old whiskies from Scotland's most prestigious distilleries. These casks can command sums in excess of £500,000 and are very much the domain of elite investors that want to own a piece of whiskey history. Um, a great example of that would be the uh, 1989 Macallan that we recently sold to uh, an independent bottler for £529,000. However, no cask is the same and there are other characteristics that can impact the value of your investments and I'll try and cover some of that a little bit later. Investor strategies, we, uh, we look here at how we can approach each cast differently. Um, we tie and work with investors to um, achieve their different objectives. Our primary aim is to allow, to always understand what the investor wants to achieve and advise them on appropriate cast choices. One of the key reasons that we see investors coming to us uh, today is Diversification. Investors that recognize how difficult the investment landscape is today want to diversify and add tangible assets to their investment portfolio. Um, assets that offer some protection for their capital. We're currently faced with low interest rates, sat at 0.01%, with the threats of negative interest rates looming in the new year. And uh, this against a backdrop of increasing inflation has resulted in the erosion of our savings held with the bank. And we're also faced with global economic instability that's reflected in the current volatility of the financial markets with very little light at the end of the tunnel in the medium term. And it's this investment environment that makes it increasingly difficult for people to find the right investment. And, and very few that offer the stability and security that an investment in whiskey offers while you're holding a fixed tangible asset. What I'd, uh, I'd like to do here is just give you a snapshot of some real examples of investments made by my clients, um, each of which had different objectives. So you can see here on the screen, we've got uh, a, a cask from the Lefroy distillery. Now, Lefroy has uh, historically shown our investors the best returns, um, around 19.88% per annum. And it comes from Isla, Scotland's top performing region on the, uh, the BC index, uh, an excellent investment opportunity. Um, this particular cask produced in 1998, 22 years old in a bourbon hogshead. The graph here illustrates the uh, steady capital appreciation of the cask over 15 years. And as you can see, that's quite a sort of steady, healthy, appreciating in value um, and then looking at the details here of this particular cast what we've done is we've tried to sort of illustrate how that cast will appreciate in value over the course of this 15-year period so you can see that my investor initially bought this cast for 77,550 um, pounds as i said they were taking a five-year or they are taking a five-year view on this particular cask and based on the projections from uh, the, uh, the BC Whiskey Index, you can see there that at year five, they are potentially putting into the market an asset that we project to be valued at 171,000 uh, pounds and 171,181 pounds is, uh, is the actual projection that our algorithm gives us. Um, the next sort of case example is uh, a cask from the Bunnahabhan distillery. Uh, Bunnahabhan historically, historically shown investors returns of 18.97% per annum. Only Lefroy uh, performs better for us. And again, this is from the top performing region of Isla. Now, the investor here is planning to... Um, Retire. He's planning essentially for retirement and wants to take a longer term approach. At 35 years old, the investor is planning to retire in the 50s. Uh, so the investor clearly has time on their side. And they're going to allow this cast to mature for around 15 years, eventually putting a 25 year old Sherry Bunnahard and cask back into the market. Oh, that's a wonderful whiskey that commands impressive 
valuations. And you can see here from the illustration, we've broken it down into some five year phases for you. And uh, at year 15, from an initial investment of 23,100 pounds, our investor has an asset that's projected to be valued at 189,797 pounds. Um, now looking at um, a different approach, this is estate planning specifically. You can see here, we're looking at Highland Park and uh, the Highland Park Distillery is another top performer on the, uh, the BC index. Um, typically investors can expect to see a return of about 15.92%. And this particular distillery, as the name suggests, is from the Highland region. And, uh, and this particular cast is in a Merlot Hogshead, so this one with a, with a wine finish to it, which is uh, important. We'll talk about that uh, a little later. Now, the, uh, the investor here is estate planning. They're uh, building a portfolio of assets that will be left to their heirs and with plenty of time to allow the whiskey to mature. The approach here is to invest in younger or new filled casks that will spend decades maturing, developing into va valuable assets that they can pass through to their family as it goes through these several important milestones. And if we look here, the projections on this particular cask, the investors actually invested in four new filled casks from the Highland Park Distillery with a total value of £12,400. And over the course of, as you can see, 10, 15 years, these particular casks have appreciated in value or projected to appreciate in value to a figure of £134,070. So that's what I've tried to do there is just highlight the th sort of three real life scenarios, real case scenarios of investors that are trying to achieve completely different things. And I, I, I hope I've highlighted that uh, by exploiting or utilizing the different stages of whiskey's maturation, how uh, we can use that to uh, achieve the uh, investment objectives that our clients have. Um, I mentioned there are other characteristics that impact the, uh, the value of your investment, um, not least of which is the distilleries. Um, analyzing the historic data, the BC20 index shows us which distilleries have shown investors the best returns. And the slide here illustrates the top performing distilleries in terms of annual capital growth. As you can see, the island regions feature heavily here, with the Freud being our top reformer, closely followed by Bunner Harbin, both Isla distilleries. Having worked with whiskeystats.net and Cask88 over the past year, analyzing historical cask sales data, we've been given some valuable insights into the performance of different casks and regions. And utilizing this data, we're able to give our clients the best possible investment advice based on empirical evidence. And the data tells us that the average industry returns currently sit at 13.09%. Um, but not all distilleries are equal. And the index uh, also suggests that historically Ardmore has shown the most moderate returns with an annual capital growth of 5.13%, which still, even in this market today, is, uh, is a healthy and admirable return. The, uh, the last thing I'd like to briefly talk about is cask type, the wood that your whiskey is maturing in. As the seasons pass, your whiskey develops character from the wood it's maturing in, drawing out these tannins that give the whiskey its rich color, taste, and character. As you can see from the graph here, cask choice can have a significant impact on the value of your investment. Sherry casks are our star performer, as you can see here. And this is driven by consumers' love for sweet, fruity, almost liqueur type character that the sherry finish contributes to the whiskey development. Investors can expect a sherry cask to command a significant premium on the value of their cask relative to a traditional bourbon cask. And we can also see here from this, which we don't have as much data because it's a relatively new trend. But wine finishes 
have also become more popular in recent years. And as you can see, the data suggests that wine casks will also add significantly to the value of the cask. Um, one approach that I quite often recommend to my clients is re-racking of their casks to maximize the return from the investment. Quite often a relatively small investment in a re-rack, so around 800 pounds, can result in a much higher return on your investment on exit. And this process simply involves decanting your whiskey into a cask of your choice, whether it be sherry, wine, or even in some cases, rum. And our team will advise you on how to approach this using our understanding of market trends and how different whiskies react to different casks. So hopefully that's given you um, a very sort of brief but sort of useful idea of the sort of various approaches you can take to your whiskey investment. Again, depending on the type of returns that you want to achieve and how long you want to be invested for. Um, I'd just like to say thank you for, uh, for your time. I hope it's given you a little bit more insight into how you can tailor your, uh, your whiskey investment to suit your objectives. And I would be happy to, uh, to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, I've got um, a question here. Is there somewhere I can track my investment? Um, in terms of tracking your investment, if you're a client of Brayburn Whiskey, obviously it's our sort of commitment to you to keep you fully up to speed with how your, uh, your investment is performing. And the BC20 index is, uh, will be updated on an annual basis. And um, we will obviously, as a client, keep you up to speed with the, um, the current valuation on your portfolio. So I've got a question here from Wilson. What is the best exit strategy? Um, Wilson, it really does depend on the age of your cask in terms of the exit strategy, whether it goes to another investor or perhaps an independent bottler, sort of yeah, particularly old casks um, with low ABVs will probably go to um, an independent bottler to be bottled. But generally, our investors, we assist them with the sale of their casks by simply matching your cask to another investor. Um, we take care of that transaction for you. And in the end, at the end of that, you receive market value for your cask. I have uh, Bart, Bart is asking, is there any assurance for the cask in case of fire, broken cask? Um, as you'd probably expect, all of our casks are insured. We use Allianz, the German insurer, and all casks are insured for any sort of damage that might occur while they're in storage. Uh, we work closely with Allianz, they um, sort of audit us so they can keep a track of current market values and that ensures that if there was ever a claim to be made, you'd receive full market value for your, uh, for your cask. Um, Jonathan Stewart is asking, can you visit to taste your cask? Um, absolutely, you can, yes. The, um, we have our storage facilities in Speyside um, and since COVID restrictions are a little difficult at the moment, but you are always welcome to come up, visit your cask, draw samples from that cask, draw bottles, you know, take photos, that sort of thing. Um, Saravan is asking me what are ongoing costs? The, uh, the ongoing costs are simply storage. Every cask of whiskey that's produced in Scotland has to remain inside um, a government bonded warehouse whilst it's maturing. We run our own facilities at Speyside, Craig Ellicke. So we would look after your cask for you. Um, it does attract a small charge, which is £65 a year, which is for your insurance, storage space, and the services of our cask managers.
So we've got here, I'd, somebody's asking me where does the cast stay physically? Um, I think that's Joachim. The, uh, the cast Joachim would be stored at our bonded warehouse facilities on your behalf. Um, at the space site site near Craig Elke. Um, hi, Anonymous is asking me, at, are the beginning casts short supply or is the Brayburn business mainly on five to 10 year old casts? Um, if I'm understanding correctly the question there, um, we work closely with suppliers and distilleries and we're able to source new fill, new make casts for our clients. And in addition to that, casts of all different ages and all different origins. So. Um, essentially, whatever cast that uh, you, you sort of would work for your investment portfolio, I feel pretty confident that we here at Brady and Whiskey would be able to help you with that. Um, Anthony Rami is asking, what is the minimum investment value? It's a good question. Um, I, I, minimum investment value you sort of invest at any level that you choose i think really the, the the sort of the better approach is to sort of establish what your investment objectives are whether it be estate planning whether it be for lump sum in the future whether it be long term or long term or short term investment and then based on that we can uh, we can give you an idea of what sort of investment level you should be coming in at um, obviously, the new fill casts tend to be at the lower price point, usually around the sort of three thousand pounds mark. A um, couple of the questions that have come up. It seems that uh, a number of people are asking the same question, and it's related to the cost of actually selling your casts. Um, as I said earlier, we would assist you with that process. We do sort of charge a small fee, obviously, for doing that. But uh, essentially, the investor will receive market value for their cash when you put it back into the market, and any charges are sort of added to that just to accommodate our work and, and obviously make it worth our while. I'm being asked if we can combine to invest in one cast. I'm assuming there what I'm being asked is can two people or more people invest in the same cast? There is a, a, a restriction as to how many people the cast can be registered to. Essentially, it can be registered to one person or entity. Um, but you know, if you're investing as a group, you know, you've got the ability to have some sort of side agreement that demonstrates you've all got uh, an equal share in that particular cast. Somebody's asking here, is it possible to bottle the cask? The answer to that is yes, certainly. Um, we have uh, the facilities at Speyside that uh, we can do that. Um, there is obviously when you're releasing your whiskey from bond, you do have to pay the, uh, the sort of appropriate VAT and, uh, and alcohol duties. Um, that isn't particularly expensive. I think with the bottle and, uh, and all the duties taken into consideration, it works out at about 15 pounds per bottle to actually bottle your own whiskey. Somebody's asking how many casts, I think this is Lucy, how many casts do you stock at one time and how big is uh, Braidburn as a company when were you founded? Um, I did sort of touch on that a little earlier on. We were founded in 2016 uh, in terms of how big we are. We have offices uh, in Singapore, Scotland and Spain. Uh, we will be opening new offices in Spain shortly, sorry, in, in Scotland shortly. And, uh, and we manage a large storage facility in Speyside. Um, how many casks do we stock at one time? We release casks on um, pretty much a weekly basis and uh, we have a pretty extensive um, list of casts that we release uh, that obviously changes from week to week and what i would advise if you sort of have some interest in looking at uh, the, the stock that we have is speak to one of our advisors and they'll be able to give you an up-to-date uh, and current idea of the stock that we uh, we currently have available um, I'm being asked here, would there be any charges, and this is Carmel, would there be any charges for re-racking the whiskey and what would that be? Um, there is a charge associated with it. Um, for our sort of, the, sort of the labor, if you will, it works out at hundred pounds. And then the cask, uh, the cost of the cask is really dependent on which cask you choose to go for. Um, 
as a ballpark figure, you can probably expect to pay about £800 to, uh, to recast your whiskey into, into sort of a sherry cask, for example. Um, a good question here again from Jonathan, what risks are involved? Um, I think obviously, you know, there's a risk that uh, the love of whiskey may decline over the years and we don't sort of foresee that happening. And one of the sort of key things that underpins this investment is the, 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 the real fact that there is a shortage of, of Scotch whiskey. Certainly all the stocks are in very short supply. Um, and, and we've experienced for, for decades now a, a genuine sort of... Uh, inability to uh, to meet uh, demand so there are risks there are obviously risks uh, in, in terms of what could physically happen to your cask but these are uh, these are insured um so i i would say the main risk is that uh, that sort of the market for whiskey declines um all the data that we see suggests that that isn't something that's going to be happening soon um i have a question here Um, if I'm understanding your question correctly, Steve, uh, um, with the amount of cash that your firm assists to, sort, assist to store, assuming an upward projector, will that distort the future market price of such whiskey, i.e. with more supply in the market? It's an interesting question. Um, the simple answer there, Steve, is no, because in terms of production of whiskey, that hasn't changed. In fact, in 2020, production of whiskey, as you'd expect, was actually, uh, was actually lower. But, um, you know, whiskey production remains at the same levels. The only difference with investors owning these casks, as opposed to them being sat with organizations like our own and distilleries, is that you have the opportunity now to profit um, from that appreciation of value as the whiskey matures. But there's no sort of, uh, there's no physical change to the amount of whiskey that's available in the market. So if that, if that answers your question. Um, Okay, I think that's uh, it. Looks like we've taken care of everybody there. No more questions to come through. Ah, one last question, David Frost. How much would bottling the cask enhance the investment? Do you have an example return of bottling the cask? I don't actually have an example here, David. Um, what we tend to advise uh, investors to do is avoid the uh, the bottling scenario. Um, you know, on average, you've got 300 plus bottles of whiskey in a cask. Um, if you were to bottle those, then obviously you've got to sort of find a network to sell those bottles to. Um, and you're at the, on releasing the whiskey from bond, you're obviously sort of uh, expected to pay the, uh, the VAT and duties associated with that. So a far sort of more simpler exit route is just to sell your cask um, onto another investor, or if it's of an age where it's probably due to be bottled, sell it on to an independent bottler. Um, it very much depends on your own individual situation, Dave, as to whether or not actually bottling the cask is going to be of any benefit to you. Um, Lucy's asked if there are possibilities to store the cask elsewhere, my home, for example, and does it have an impact on the value? Um, Lucy, all whiskey that's produced in Scotland whilst it's maturing has to be kept inside a government bonded warehouse. Um, it's only when, the, as I've said before, then the duty and the VAT is paid on that whiskey, can it then be released from bond? Um, so the simple answer is no, you, you would be required to keep your cash stored in a bonded warehouse in Scotland whilst it's going for that maturation period. And one last one, is it costly to sell a cask? Um, as I said earlier, we will take care of that for you and uh, you can expect to get market value for your cash when you put it back into the market. Any costs associated with the sale will be covered by the buyer. Okay, well, look, I'd, uh, I think I've covered everybody there. Um, thank you all again for your time. I hope that has been uh, some use to you and giving you a little bit more insight into how the investment works. And what your options are, and uh, and we look forward to uh, to helping you all with your uh, your whiskey investment journey.